You might have seen the stream already, and if you haven't, it's in the description below, but NASA did it after all. They finally launched the Artemis 1 mission. The first mission to be launched to the moon in order to test new technologies, and most importantly, if we can then launch people using the same spacecraft, using the same procedures. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're actually going to discuss a little bit more about this mission that you might have not known before, and specifically discuss some of the more or less known details about Artemis 1, and of course where all of this is headed afterwards. But first let's actually watch the launch itself, as it happens on November 16, 2022, with I think the most spectacular part coming up any second now, the separation of two extremely powerful boosters that are essentially required for this mission to work properly because of the extreme power of this rocket. This is the most powerful rocket ever produced, with the separation being right here, creating the beautiful formation that you see right here, with two boosters very likely being destroyed and then falling somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Now we've discussed Artemis 1 in some of the previous videos you can find in the description, but there are a few things I wanted to specifically discuss about this particular mission, and specifically the kind of science that's going to be done in the next few days. Although here it's important to mention that the launch once again almost got cancelled. You probably already know that it was cancelled several times for various technical reasons, and this time there was another technical problem that almost resulted in the cancellation once again. The scientists actually detected a hydrogen leak in one of the valves that prevented the spacecraft from launching on time. And so a team of super brave engineers had to be sent to the spacecraft in order to try to fix the valve, which they did successfully. But anyway, where exactly is the spacecraft right now? Well, the website that you can find in the description sort of shows you exactly what the capsule, the Orion capsule that you see right here, is currently doing and where exactly it's located compared to planet Earth or compared to the moon where it's headed. As a matter of fact, you can actually even see the entire orbit by looking at it from this perspective, which kind of shows you that it's going to have a rendezvous with the moon. It's then going to orbit with the moon for just a little bit, returning back to Earth sometime around December 11, with the entire mission taking approximately 25 days. And obviously, just hours after launch, we already started getting a lot of data, a lot of pictures and even videos, like this one right here, showing us the incredible footage as the spacecraft begins its official mission. Here is also one of the first pictures showing us both the Orion and the Orion's service module. It's actually produced by ESA and it's already been doing quite a lot of correction maneuvers in order to assume the proper orbit around the moon. And this mission is obviously important for several reasons. First of all, it's the first mission in 50 years that launched a spacecraft capable of taking people to the moon. With the Apollo missions and the Saturn V rocket that you see right here being the last time it was actually possible. But there were only six missions that landed people on the moon, with the initial exploration essentially ending at that point. And so NASA has started the Artemis program, a program that's going to be a kind of a multi-step approach in order to give us an opportunity to try to go to another planet. And the idea here was to create a spacecraft capable of delivering people even farther than the moon, which is exactly why the SLS rocket was created for this particular purpose. But unlike the Apollo missions that would basically land on the moon directly, in this case, the Artemis mission is going to be relying on a space station orbiting around the moon that it's going to be docking to in order to transfer the astronauts and in order to commence its mission. And so the gateway station that we've discussed in one of the previous videos is basically a crucial component to all of this. As a matter of fact, uh, right now NASA is investigating the potential orbit for the gateway by using one of the satellites we've discussed in one of the videos in the description. But if all of this works well, the next step is of course Mars. And the gateway station in this case is going to serve as a direct transit point for a lot of future Martian missions as well. But obviously to start, we still have to test a lot of technologies and the module itself. And that's basically what Artemis 1 is doing right now. But it's not just a test of technology though. As a matter of fact, there are 10 specific scientific missions that it's going to be conducting as well. And to be more specific, there are actually 10 passengers, 10 CubeSats or tiny satellites that are going to be conducting their own individual scientific missions with some of them being extremely interesting. And to me personally, that's actually where the fun part of the mission is. These 10 satellites are going to be discovering 10 separate things and are very likely going to be telling us a little bit more about the moon, about the solar system or about things that we can do on the moon once their mission is complete. It's not actually going to be finished anytime soon and for some of them it's going to take months and months of investigation, but all 10 have already been launched after the last course correction by the Orion probe. Now because all of these are CubeSats, they had to be really small and their mission profiles had to be extremely well thought out. As a matter of fact, three of the CubeSats could not even be completed in time 
because the three groups that were supposed to participate here didn't get to finalize their plans because of the overall complexity. But 10 CubeSats made it, such as for example Lunar Ice Cube. The CubeSat that's going to be orbiting around the Moon for quite a long time, looking for signs of water ice on the surface of the Moon. Another satellite known as Loon IR is going to be looking at the Moon in the infrared in order to create better surface maps and in order to characterize a lot of surface features where potential future missions could be landed. But one of the satellites is going to be doing something really extreme. The Japanese satellite known as Omotenashi. And this satellite is actually going to try to land on the Moon by using extremely small amounts of propellant and initiating what's known as a semi-hard landing. In other words, it could become the smallest spacecraft to ever land on the Moon. With the main purpose for this mission being a trajectory test and a technology test to see if these particular landings are even feasible. Because that way we could maybe send a bunch of probes to the Moon by using extremely small satellites and using relatively simple mission profiles. Then there is this tiny satellite known as NIA Scout. But this is its current size. Once it's deployed, it's going to have an enormous solar sail and it's actually going to try to use the Sun to fly away from the Earth system in order to rendezvous with a nearby asteroid. And that's also going to be a super exciting mission and actually the first such mission to be ever attempted, testing quite a lot of technologies including solar sails in the process. With some other CubeSats also measuring radiation environment around the Moon, measuring the magnetic fields and the magnetic interaction around the Moon, or testing new propulsion methods. For example, a satellite known as Team Miles is testing what's known as plasma engine technology, or basically a tiny plasma propulsion engine that's going to be firing around the Moon in order to see how well this particular propulsion works. And so in that sense, Artemis 1 has quite a lot of exciting things going on that's technically 11 separate missions, with some of these satellite missions being exceptionally exciting and very interesting, testing some really incredible technologies. Lastly, one of the CubeSats is actually even going to go much farther. The CubeSat for solar particles is going to escape the Earth system and is going to orbit the Sun in order to study various types of magnetic fields and solar particles. All of this done by this relatively tiny satellite already on the way to the interplanetary space. And that's actually on top of technologies that are being tested inside the capsule. For example, there are obviously no people here, but there are three different mannequins. And each of them contains quite a lot of sensors, obviously meant to provide a lot of data about what the potential crew is going to be experiencing as well. But one of these sensors is the experiment known as MARE, Matryoshka Asteroid Radiation Experiment. A collaboration between NASA, German Aerospace Center and Israeli Space Center meant to measure the radiation exposure during this mission. And in this case it actually involves this, somewhat unusual looking, radiation vest known as Astrorad. Essentially a radiation shield that's being worn by this mannequin that the scientists want to test in order to see if it actually works. And because only one of these mannequins is wearing it, the idea here is to see how much more radiation the other mannequins are going to be getting and if this is something that's going to become a staple of many space missions in the future. I think the actual vest kind of looks like this now, so it does have a slightly better appeal. But obviously for now, once Artemis 1 is complete, we're going to have Artemis 2. This time it's going to have people inside. And then Artemis 3, in 2025, is going to attempt an actual landing. But not for another 3 years. And then, on December 11th, is going to be testing the last piece of technology. The new heat shield that's supposed to protect the capsule during its re-entry when the temperatures are going to reach thousands of degrees. And once everything works, hopefully it works, NASA can start the next step. Which is of course the astronauts, but also building the gateway station that's going to be orbiting around the moon for many years to come. And if you'd like to learn more about the gateway, check out one of the previous videos exploring this in more detail. This is of course the station that's eventually going to replace the International Space Station, and at least in theory, literally become a gateway to the rest of the solar system as well. Because of its peculiar orbit, it's going to provide us with an opportunity to launch missions really really far away. More about this in some of the future videos as well. But at least for now, that's basically all we know. In the next few weeks, we're probably going to hear more about the progress of all of the satellites and also the Artemis 1 itself, and hopefully everything goes fine. But until then, check out all the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.